I am Peter Adams, lecturer in family medicine at the University of the West Indies. Diabetes is a global epidemic. In Barbados, where I work, it is estimated that about 20% of people over the age of 40 years are diabetic. Exercise is important both in the prevention and treatment of diabetes, with most authorities recommending between 150 to 210 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise. However, many people do not achieve the required exercise volume with a lack of time being cited as a reason. High intensity exercise is performed at maximal or close to maximal effort and unlike moderate intensity exercise can be sustained for short periods only. One example is the Wingate test where cycling at maximal effort for 30 seconds is done against resistance. Typically, an exercise session consists of four to six bouts of cycling separated by rest periods for a total of two to three minutes of high intensity exercise per session. Such an exercise protocol is referred to as sprint interval training or high intensity interval training, sometimes abbreviated as SIT or HIT. The aim of this paper is to review the impact of high intensity exercise of short duration on blood glucose levels in diabetic and non-diabetic people. To answer this question, a narrative review was done. Articles describing exercise at an intensity of at least 80% VO2 max, that's 80% of the maximal oxygen uptake possible, and no more than 15 minutes duration, along with glucose levels, were reviewed. The main findings in healthy non-diabetic individuals were as follows. Six studies with a total of 65 participants were reviewed. Studies were of 2 to 12 weeks duration. 2 to 6 weeks of sprint interval training on a cycle ergometer improved insulin sensitivity. What is remarkable is that only seven and a half to eight minutes of actual high intensity exercise per week was required. It has also been shown that near maximal interval running for only 20 minutes per week lowered blood glucose to the same extent as running at one, running 150 minutes per week at 65% VO2 max. That's just above a moderate intensity level. There has been little testing of brief high intensity exercise in either type 1 or type 2 diabetic patients. Eight studies with 63 participants were identified, with only three studies involving type 2 diabetics. Studies ranged from a single exercise session to seven weeks duration. Generally, high intensity interval training increased blood glucose during exercise and in the 30 minutes post-exercise period in both type 1 and type 2 diabetics. This increase is due to catecholamine release and makes exercise-induced hypoglycemia unlikely. Following this, however, there was a blood glucose lowering effect and two to three days after two-week training program, the average 24-hour blood glucose was reduced by 13% compared to pre-intervention. High intensity interval training has therefore shown promise in lowering blood glucose and improving insulin sensitivity. However, studies have been few, of short duration, and have involved a small number of subjects only. It is therefore left to be seen if improvements would be sustained over a longer period and could be replicated in the general population.